Good evening. Welcome back to worship on Wednesday. Let's stand as we sing. When the roll is called up yonder. trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more and the morning breaks eternal bright and fair when the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore and the roll is called up yonder I'll be there when the roll is called up yonder when the roll called up yonder when the roll is called up yonder when the roll is called up yonder I'll be there let us labor for the master from the dawn till setting sun let us talk of all his wondrous love and care then when all of life is over and our work on earth is done and the roll is called up yonder i'll be there when the roll is called up yonder when the roll is called up yonder when the roll is called up yonder called up yonder I'll be there my Savior is the Lord and King he has control of everything he loves me and he bids me sing he gives his song to me Jesus is the song of life Jesus is the song of joy Jesus is the song of love Jesus gives his song to me he comes my hurts and dries my tears he gives me strength to face my fears he sends his grace through all my years. He gives his song to me. Jesus is the song of life. Jesus is the song of joy. Jesus is the song of love. Jesus gives his song to My Savior Jesus, I'll adore. My weary soul, He will restore. I'll praise His name forevermore. He'll give His song to me. Jesus is the song of life. Jesus is the song of joy. Jesus is the song of love. Jesus gives his song to me. Heavenly Father, Lord, we pause now as we come to the throne of grace. Confessing our sin asking for forgiveness praying heavenly father uh, in, with great thankfulness for another day that we've been given we pray thankfulness for the opportunity to assemble here this night to worship again the king of kings and lord of lords so we pray heavenly father as we gather here tonight that you help us to put the things of the world out of our mind as we come to focus on the giver of life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river.
like a river, I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got joy like a river. I've got joy like a river. I've got joy like a river in my soul. I've got joy like a river. I've got joy like a river. I've got joy like a river in my soul. I love. This is what the world looks like sometimes. Look at faces in a crowd and it's easier to see the crowd, not the faces. It's the way we are. But zoom in to one face, one person at a time. And if you look close enough, you might see what we see. The girl who gets high every day before school so she won't feel anything. Or the just immigrated Chinese mom who teaches her kids there's no God because that's all she's ever known. Where the world sees a crowd, we see a person close up. We're the ones who speak hope to them. We're the missionaries you send when you give to the Annie Armstrong Easter offering. We see what hope can do can't sit still because this hope is the hope of the gospel it's a powerful thing it pushes us to leave whatever is comfortable it shows the lost someone is looking for them and it gives you and us a mission to complete together in Puerto Rico and Portland and Montreal and Miami in college towns, in small towns, and big cities, in every language, in every North American life, Jesus saves. We've seen it. And all he asks is that we, missionaries, 
churches, everyday believers, share what we have. Give to the Annie Armstrong Easter offering. And this is what happens. New churches start. Those who are far off are brought near. And together, we send hope. Amen. Thank you, Lacey. Uh, Sending Hope is the 2019 theme for the Annie Armstrong Easter offering and uh, the emphasis of the North American Mission Board uh, for reaching this continent for the Lord Jesus Christ. Two components of that. One is this week of prayer that we are now right in the middle of. We began Sunday uh, with day one and then Monday I hope you uh, prayed uh, on Monday and Tuesday and again today and if you haven't today yet we'll give you that opportunity in just a few minutes of time so the week of prayer is eight days praying for our North American missionaries and praying that God would move us to give and to go and assist them in their places of service and then not only is the week of prayer a component, but also the uh, Annie Armstrong Easter offering that we have a goal this year of $7,019 for our church. And so I think we should easily be able to accomplish that. And, and uh, you know, it's just amazing how that $7,019, the Lord multiplies that and uses it. Uh, for our missionaries in the North American continent, on the North American continent. So during this special season, the North American Mission Board, or you may uh, see the acronym NAMB, NAM, every now and then pop up, and the missionaries involved in church planning and compassion ministries across the United States and Canada are sincerely grateful for all that you do in praying for them and giving so that they can go and then prayerfully considering going on a short-term mission trip to support their work. If you would look with me in your Bible, 1 Peter chapter 1, we looked at this two weeks ago, uh, did a quick uh, look at 1 Peter chapter 1, but the theme verse for our week of prayer and indeed the entire season of North American missions is 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse number 3. And it's, it says this, Bless be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because of his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Would you pray with me? Our Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight to thank you for the opportunity that we have to gather at your house. The weather has been so beautiful, and the sunshine has been so bright, the skies have been so blue. And Lord, yes, the temperatures, they have been frigid, but Lord, we live in a beautiful part of the world, and it's been a beautiful day today, indeed a beautiful week. And Lord, we come today to just praise your name and to thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, who loved us so much that he willingly chose to lay down his life on a Roman cross and to shed his blood because of our sin. He who was without sin, knew no sin, became sin so that we might know the righteousness of God. Heavenly Father, we just praise you for salvation in Christ Jesus. Thank you for the faithful work of our women on mission in this congregation. And Father, for our mission groups that meet and learn about going on mission and being on mission and being not only a mission-minded church but a missional church 
in a culture that desperately needs Jesus. And Father, we pray for every one of our North American missionaries, wherever they're stationed, wherever you have called them to serve, those who are planting churches, those in metropolitan areas and those in rural areas, those on college campuses. And Lord, we just lift them up to you tonight and pray that God, you would embolden their hearts and that you would give them the courage to follow the Holy Spirit's leading as they share the good news of Jesus. We come and we pray, Heavenly Father, for hearts where they are serving. Holy Spirit, that you might open those hearts that they would be willing to hear the good news of the gospel and be saved. And we pray for ourselves this evening, that, Lord, we would have a heart for those lost souls, for the souls in Oneida, Scott County, McCreary County, Tennessee, Kentucky, the whole United States of America, Canada, and, Lord, all of the American territories. We lift them up to you, Heavenly Father. And we pray that, God, you would use them in a mighty way to your name be the glory, to the salvation of souls, that they can become transformed so that they can be transformers. In the powerful name of Jesus, sharing the gospel then with their families and friends and acquaintances. And so, Father... Put on our hearts day by day to pray for them. Put on our hearts, Lord, to give so that our missionaries can go. And I pray individually that every one of us would know the amount that you are putting on our hearts to give. Lord, we don't want to reach a goal just to reach a goal. We want to reach a goal to win souls. And so, Father, we pray that, God, you would challenge our hearts. And, God, then that you would call some of us to go on some short-term mission trips to assist our missionaries in North America. And, Lord, I pray also then for somebody in our church that you may be calling to be a career missionary to the North American continent. Speak to our hearts, Lord Jesus. Speak to us and help us to be bold to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit and we'll give you the praise for it now Lord we just pray for the sick of our church those who have had surgery we we pray for Billy Hamilton lift her up in her recovery and fulfill we lift up Heavenly Father Wilma human and pray that uh, Lord her surgery uh, delayed as it was this afternoon and as late as it was that God it'll be successful and that she'll be feeling better than she's felt in a long time as she recovers from this we pray for her and Marshall pray for Kim we lift them all up to you we pray father for those some of them even sitting in our congregation tonight that are going undergoing physical affliction and we lift them up to you tonight. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that your healing hand would be upon them. And, Lord, we know they're trusting you. And we just pray that you would touch them physically. And, God, we thank you for new life and birth of babies. And we thank you, Heavenly Father, uh, for volunteers who come like Darren did today and worked on our boiler so that we could even have service tonight. And, Lord, we thank you for all that do all the things that make the church work and keep everything going. Lord, we just love you and praise you for your goodness. Bless our nation. And, Lord, help the bereaved tonight. One family I'm especially thinking of, lift them up to you in the loss of a young life so tragically. Father, we just pray for the Fugit family and the Jesse family and God we lift them up to you tonight now Lord speak to us about our mission involvement challenge our hearts from your word and then Lord as we move into our business meeting may your will be done in every decision in Jesus name 
Amen. Amen. Well, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because of his great mercy, he's given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. I want to share with you a few thoughts that's actually uh, from words from our North American Mission Board. They talk about the fact that there's 363 million people on the North American continent. That's a lot of folks, isn't it? 363 million people on the North American continent. And you know what's the staggering effect of that is I'm glad you all are sitting down. I'm glad I already had read this. Over 273 million of those don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. Now we're just talking about the United States, Canada, Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, Guam, and American Samoa. 200 and 73 million souls that don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, and that may be a conservative number. So what do they need? They need a living hope. Many of them are living in the United States and Canada especially. They're not even natives of our country. Of course, if we go back far enough, none of us are. But they're here seeking hope. They gather, especially in our metropolitan areas, seeking hope. You'll see a video in just a few minutes about especially one people group that gathers in the metropolitan areas in huge numbers, hundreds of thousands of people seeking hope in this country because they see our nation as a land of hope. Well, our North American Mission Board is trying to take advantage of that and give them real hope in Jesus Christ. And so the foreign mission fields, we used to call them, the international fields we call them now, have come at a record rate to the North American continent. So not only do we need to win all of our families and all of our neighborhood, but our metro areas are absolutely teeming with people from other nations. Nashville, Tennessee is one of the most diverse cultural areas in the United States. The number of people groups in Nashville, Tennessee would absolutely blow your mind. There's just about every religion that you can imagine represented there and many of the folks that have gathered in Nashville, Tennessee, as well as other metropolitan areas all across the country, don't know Jesus as Savior. So we don't have to go far to see a mission field that is of every color and race and creed in our state and our United States and the North American continent. So we think about that living hope. He says here in the third verse, that because of his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope. So we have that living hope. And we have that living hope because of what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary for us. And we are to share it. And I want you to notice that Peter was writing during a time of high persecution and a time that the dispersed uh, Christians were around everywhere. And, and those Hebrew Christians that he wrote to were in a great state of persecution uh, being scattered about and and he doesn't begin by thinking about let's cry in our soup baby but he began with a note of, of praise and adoration that's what that is in verse 3 blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ and he went on to say why because of his great mercy he's given us a new birth into a living hope so uh, the tone from the stories of you saw Sunday morning, if you weren't in the choir, uh, you saw a short version of, of the day two missionaries uh, before our worship service started. And tonight you're going to see a little longer version as we close of one of the missionaries that's being featured uh, this year. And I wanted it because it talks about this people group in the metropolitan areas of, of uh 
of the West especially, but I want you to hear uh, that story and hear the exuberance with which they are answering the call of God to people who are hurting. And he says, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So then he says, because of his great mercy. What do you think about God's mercy? Now we say that grace is when God gives us what we don't deserve and mercy is when God doesn't give us what we do deserve. So what do we think about God's grace? Do we see how great his mercy is? Are we tempted sometimes to minimalize the grace and mercy of God? Well, uh, we have mercy in our life. Uh, Brother Jimmy Delk, you know what I would get if the Lord gave me what I deserve? Man, he'd, I'd been smacked down a long time ago and, and buried a long time ago because that's what I deserve. I don't know what you think you deserve, but I praise him for his mercy on a daily basis because he is so merciful to me. And then he goes on and says that he has given us a new birth into a living hope. It reminds you of John 3, 3, when Jesus spoke to Nicodemus, doesn't it? And that ruler came to Jesus by night, and he wanted to know, what, what do I have to do to get into the kingdom? I'm doing all this other anyway. What do I have to do? And Jesus said to him, unless you're born again, unless you're born from above, you'll never even see the kingdom of God. And so everybody, John reminds us, Jesus reminds us through John there that unless someone's born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. New birth is the key. I hope that if you're hearing my voice tonight that you're assured that you have experienced the new birth because your relationship with God and the life of hope that you experience personally in your life is the foundation that puts you in a position to be on mission in our world today. All across North America, all across North America, right here in Oneida, and all across North America, you know what people are looking for? People are searching for real permanent hope. A lot of times they're seeking it in relationships. Well, if I just find the right person, I'll have hope. I'm not happy with the person I got. I'll find somebody else. I'll have hope then. They're looking for material possessions. There are some people I know that you can't talk to them five minutes unless they're talking about material possessions and what they hope to consume and get and, and trade what they've got for something else and, and get a bigger and better paying job than what they've got now. So material possessions and position. A lot of people, you don't have to pay them much. You just give them a title, and they're happy. Amen? They worry more about their title than they do their salary. And so they're looking for position and how many people that they can be in charge of and, and many other empty ways people are searching for in this world, looking for a, a hope that fills the void in their soul. But you know what? There's only the real hope found in Jesus Christ. And North American Mission Board missionaries, Southern Baptist missionaries being sent out by Southern Baptists, supported by the Annie Armstrong Easter offering, are sharing the sure, eternal hope found only in Christ. And this is a hope that's transforming lives. It will transform families that are broken apart. It will transform communities. It will transform our nation that's as fractured as I've ever seen it in all my days. We join in this mission with our missionaries in our prayers and our giving, and hopefully, by the grace of God, our going. We also join in as we work on the mission field in our own community because we are part of the North American continent. Peter connects this hope that he's talking about to a promised future inheritance. If you've got your Bible still open, look down at verse number 4. And into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, unfading, kept in heaven for you. So he links that together with that eternal hope 
And you know what? He takes our eyes off of the current tribulations and temptations. These are just temporary. No matter how bad things get in this world, remember, it's temporary. If you're a child of God, it's temporary. Uh, we found out late this afternoon, Debbie had a cousin uh, killed in an automobile accident. Her other cousin was one of the walk-ons seniors at UT. And uh, he was, this other cousin's a student at UT Chattanooga. And he came up last night for the big game and the senior night. And long story short, he didn't make it back to Chattanooga. He had an early test this morning and somewhere down about Athens, was involved in an accident, and his young life snuffed out. But you know the good news of that? The good news of that is Joseph Fugit was a born-again believer in Jesus Christ, active in the Salem Baptist Church down in Halls, Halls Crossroads, Tennessee. Wonderful young man. My sister went to church with him. He was my wife Debbie's cousin, known their families for years, served the Lord alongside them, and the hurt is temporary. I feel and heartbroken for their family. But the good side of that, Brother Amon, is Joseph's already outstripped us. He's with Jesus. You know why? Because he had that real hope, that eternal hope hope that was based on the assurance of what Jesus did for him on Calvary's cross. So if we're going to be witnesses of living hope, we need to live our life like we're transformed. We need to be transformed from the inside out. And we need to reflect that living hope to those who are around us following Christ's example of holy living and allowing the power of God's Spirit within us to enable us to do that. 49% of the North American Mission Board's work is funded through the Annie Armstrong Easter offering. 49% of their entire budget comes from the Annie Armstrong Easter offering. Another large chunk of that comes through the cooperative program that our church gives 11% of undesignated offerings to. So we're, we're supporting it in two different ways. But we can pray, we can give, and we can go. And our, we are asked today to pray for Rob and Lisa Warren. And they are serving, you'll see a video of them a little bit later in the season. They're in Madison, Wisconsin, at a university that has 40,000-plus kids. And Madison, Wisconsin, and that university is one of the most liberal thinking areas in the United States of America. And th this couple, God has called them there to plan a collegiate church. And a lot of students have gone there, enrolled there, to be a part of that collegiate church to help win not only that campus, but that community of Jesus Christ. Amazing what God is doing. That young people right out of high school have a call of God on their life, that they would even choose their college based on where they can be part of a church plant to win that campus for Christ. And your mission offering dollars and your prayers are helping energize that work in Madison, Wisconsin. Would you pray with me? And then Lacey's going to, there's a two and a half minute video. And was it loud enough, the first one? Could everybody hear it? If we can get some more, a little more volume. And I'm going to move down there where I can hear it. And enjoy this. But look at the faces in this city about planning a church, okay? Lord, help us, speak to us, use us, burden us, and Lord, give us a vision 
for the work you have for us to do. As we see this video, in Jesus' name, amen. Right now, there is history being made. It starts with Chinese people, hundreds of thousands of them, moving to our cities in search of the American dream. When they get here, they're curious, lonely, and lost. My name is Jeremy Sin, and I help Chinese believers starting Southern Baptist churches for these people. The believers and church planters I work with, their home country is communist and takes a strong stand on atheism. That's why we don't show you their faces or use their names, but you need to know their stories. Chinese people really are cautious towards Christians and the church. That's a foreign thing to them. This Chinese brother came to a major U.S. city to attend school. There he found himself surrounded by tens of thousands of other Chinese people. And when he discovered he was just about the only Christian in his community, he changed his plans. He started a Chinese first ever Mandarin-speaking Southern Baptist Church. And now his church is growing because the Chinese people he meets all seem to want the same thing. God has opened doors and some Chinese people make friends with us. Now they gradually bring their friends to our group. Many big North American cities have a hundred thousand or more Chinese people, but only one or two or zero Chinese Southern Baptist churches. That's why your gifts to the Annie Armstrong Easter offering are so important. Because when you give, you're helping to start the first ever Chinese churches like this one and helping to create first ever gospel encounters. A lot of Chinese people came here to have a better life. There's more freedom. There's more of everything good in the United States, but real freedom, real life is in Christ. You cannot see their faces. You cannot know their names, but you can help change their lives when you give to the Annie Armstrong Easter offering. That's why it's important for everyone to know the stories about missionaries like this one and the Chinese people they are meeting and introducing to Jesus. Amen. I tell you, isn't it amazing how God uses our missionaries? And sometimes I get tunnel vision and just see the people around me but whenever I see something like this and think about a hundred thousand and probably 99 percent of those or more don't know Jesus they're here in a strange culture and the opportunities abound so God bless you uh, pray about your participation Dig that prayer calendar out of your Bible from Sunday if you don't have it displayed in a prominent place and don't miss the rest of the week of prayer. And if you happen to have gotten busy uh, like and miss Monday, Tuesday, uh, you can pray next Monday and Tuesday for them. Uh, there's not a limit, okay? And so you can catch up then. So don't beat yourself up. Just, just do it. Let's pray for them. Okay, this is our regular business meeting. At this time, I'm going to call...